Hi folks, um, it's another gathering for the Init 6 team. Um, slightly reduced numbers tonight because of short notice because we wanted to get, um, well, a, a, a guest from Cisco in to talk to us was specifically around some emulation stuff for our training, some, some stuff about viral, hopefully. So, um, Joe, do you want to just quickly introduce yourself and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start firing questions at you. Okay, uh, my name is Joe Clark. I'm a distinguished engineer in our customer experience organization. I uh, now work under uh, Susie Lee in our newly formed uh, DevCX organization, which is a combination of learning at Cisco, Dev, um, our communities, and uh, our, our customer success and enablement organizations. Um, we this group has the the new uh, the newly uh, reinvented. Uh, Cisco Modeling Lab, CML team, formerly the viral team, uh, also the CML team, but uh, now we're doing with CML Personal Edition and Enterprise Edition. Um, and they've been uh, killing it for a while on uh, getting this next release ready for mass consumption. Myself personally, um, my areas of uh, expertise of uh, interest are around uh, network automation, programmability, I work in the uh, IETF to uh, help foster some of the model-driven, Yang model-driven uh, programmability in the industry, and um, I'm a pilot, so that's about me in a nutshell. Just drop that one in there at the end. <laughs> that's impressive. Cool. So, what, so I know Wolfram, we were having a discussion earlier in the week about a few things, um, and you had some questions you wanted to ask, and I guess good a place to start as any. So. What do you know? Yeah, thanks. First of all, so really cool that you are with us uh, tonight, and um, <laughs> and it's it's a it's a really it's a really good topic. So, Will is uh, yeah has been an interesting topic for me for for many years. I remember when the the product actually came out. Our Cisco SE he he showed it to me and he said it's a internal beta whatever stuff and it's not official yet. And he refused to talk uh, more about it, and so I had it escalated by my managers that we wanted a demo, and uh, when it was available, um, we we bought it for use in in our company, and I've been using it since then. But now um, I would really be interested. Um, what uh, um, if if we look at the, the current version? Um, what is uh, from now? Where, where do you think we are? Where are we going? I think there is this version two ahead. There was a demo at a, at a Cisco Live. Can you say a little bit about where are you? Are you heading there? Sure, I can show you if you if that's something you want to do. Um, but yeah, the uh, the current version of, of Viral uh, Virtual Internet Routing Labs which is the personal edition of a bigger product we sell called Cisco Modeling Labs. It's currently in the 1.x. Uh, that's what you can, you can buy. It's a year subscription for $200. The 1.x architecturally was built around OpenStack and in a client server model where the, the server is this OpenStack framework and the client is something uh, based on Eclipse. So if you're familiar with the Eclipse IDE, the client called VMmodel or the one familiar to it. Um, in a nutshell, it is, if you've never seen it before, a graphical way of, of drawing a network topology, putting nodes and links, and then uh, assigning those nodes operating systems like our uh, iOS, iOS XC, XR, uh, virtual ASA, so on and so forth, and you power on the virtual topology and you're running uh, what we call the reference platform, actual images of those virtual, like it, they're not real, it's obviously not backed by hardware, but they are the full operating system. Otherwise, from a software standpoint, for those operating systems. So you're not getting anything that's emulated. It is a, a, a simulation, as we call it. So you get the full uh, feature set. There are some things because of the lack of hardware that aren't supported, but in general, what it becomes is a great tool to learn networking, to test, uh, new configurations to test uh, protocol interactions. Um, it has APIs on top of it, so you can integrate it into automated testing uh, pipelines. Um, and it's become um, a great tool for learning, but because of that OpenStack 
uh, nature uh, and, and that weight to it, it was a little bit tricky to set up, especially for people who wanted to start studying for their CCNA. Um, they're just getting into networking and wanted a, a virtual lab at home. Uh, plus, OpenStack isn't, isn't light. It comes with its own set of resources that it needs. So that took away from what you could assign to those virtual devices. So the 2.0, which is coming this month, uh, this month, this month um, okay. will now no longer be called viral. It will be called uh, Cisco Modeling Labs, the personal edition. Um, that will be the replacement for viral. Of course, there'll be the Cisco Modeling Labs Enterprise Edition for the, the thing that was CML. Um, like I said, I could show you, but I'll, I'll describe it. it Via Maestro bit has gone away. It's all HTML5, all uh, JavaScript and dynamic HTML. It was built with an API first approach. So everything that you do in the in the GUI um, is driven by the APIs that are also publicly, or, or I should say exposed and documented for you to program to if you wanted to automate the creation and uh, uh, spin up of your topologies. Um, it is the, the licensing that we used to use was based on salt stack and it was a little convoluted and kind of interesting to maintain. We're now using the smart licensing um, with viral. Um, it is virtual only. We used to have, uh, and we might reintroduce this notion of a bare metal install where you could get an ISO image of a, of a Linux operating system mm -hmm. and, and spin it up. Now, initially it will be an OVA so you can deploy it in um, ESXi, VMware Workstation, VMware Fusion, um, and it comes with the same set of reference platform uh, images, a slightly different uh, uh, format there. There's a standalone ISO, uh, which allows us to rev um, the images without necessarily uh, revving the, the version of, of CML. So you can get new versions of images. There's an image editor that uh, was in the old version, but um, a, a little bit nicer now that everything is HTML5 uh, based. The uh, uh, ability to add multiple releases is also there. So for example, you might want uh, the late version of the CSR 1000V, the latest iOS XE, but you might want to keep a few revisions back. Same thing with like NXOSD, so you can have uh, the ability to test uh, different software versions and, and different interactions there. Because there is no more OpenStack uh, on the server side, it was written from the ground up by the, the CML team. They, they came at it with this kind of clean slate architecture. Uh, they really put a lot of thought into how this would fit together. They built some very custom uh, backend networking mesh uh, to, to support all this. There's a lot less resources that are required for the operating system itself, which means that as a user who might be wanting to run this on their laptop, uh, they, they have a lot more resources freed up for um, uh, creating topologies which you care about. And the interface is much nicer. It's much more, I like what they've done in terms of connecting uh, connecting nodes. Uh, there's now persistence. So in the past, you would have to uh, shut down your topology, make changes. You'd have to hopefully back up the configuration and then you bring everything back up. Now what you've got is this notion of, I can shut things down and the, the state kind of stays and I can bring it back up and the config is preserved until I choose to say wipe a node or wipe a lab. And then the configuration either for that node or for that entire topology uh, goes away. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can add uh, devices live, so I don't have to shut everything down. I can throw a device in there, link it up, and it all works. Add really a well. device with a running simulation. This was not possible in the past. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So, That's. Uh... <laughs> so what I've been doing lately, uh, I've been modeling uh, our uh, uh, Nexus 9K infrastructure for what, what uh, formal learning at Cisco had for their lab. And so I've started in piecemeal. I've got a running topology uh, with a couple 9Ks and I wanted to add some more. So I just threw it out there. I didn't have to shut everything down and I could just keep incrementally building things. So they've done a lot of nice Questions work. real quick. Yeah. You take multiple snapshots of the, like different points in time. So if you're learning to do things, or is it just kind of a one snapshot of your topology? 
Uh, you can clone um, topologies. Uh, you can clone nodes. Just log me out. Uh, so you can do that and create different um, different versions of the same lab over time if you want. Mm -hmm. From like learning, where you, like you know, a lot of times you want to practice. This is when we were going through. I.e., you get to step here, but then you have to blow everything away and start all the way back at square one. It'd be good to go back to you know square two or square three, right? Yep. The name the name uh, change to CML. Does it mean that it gets closer to the let's say enterprise version, or is it still the same kind of? personal edition with, let's say, um, not so expensive pricing. <laughs> it's still the personal edition. So the, the, the name has changed. The, um, the capabilities are, are more or less on par with, with what viral uh, PE had. Um, yes, so, and, and in fact, it may not all be de-viralized by the time it releases, just because there was a lot of discussion internally to figure out what the, the final branding would be. Um, as you mentioned, Wolfram, when it first came out, it came out of our, our CTAO organization, which was a, kind of a startup mentality. They would do these big bet projects and, yeah. and play with things. And they had a lot of fun. They, they didn't have the strictures of, of branding and everything. So there were a lot of inside jokes and viral, and, and they, they liked clever names like that. Um, but branding never really liked the idea of, of something that um, had a negative connotation. So they were always looking to find their their in to, to change the name. This was kind of the, a, a good time for that doing the major revision. And how difficult would it be? CML was the... How difficult would it be, Joe, to give us a little sneak peek of what we're talking about here? I was just going to say, we've got to gotta have a, a quick look, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. One, one yeah. of the things why you're, you're doing that, I know, at least from having used it in the past, I mean, a lot of features and functionality were uh, we're there on the route switch side and, and on, you know, testing out that stuff. Um, is there more now from like a programmability standpoint or things like voice and data center, like, you know, like you couldn't do OTV or, you know, um, um, FCOE and things like that in the previous versions? No. Um, so, so that wasn't really a limitation of, of the product itself in, in, as much as it was a limitation of the hard well, the fact that there was no hardware um, in the reference platforms, the reference platform support. Um, so the, the answer is still like no. There are some things that are going to require uh, an actual device, but um, it is fairly easy. And hopefully, you're seeing my instance of CML or viral too, yeah. as, it, as it is. Um, so, so this is the release candidate numero three. Um, which should be fairly close to being the final. Um, what I've been doing here, like I mentioned earlier, is modeling the uh, what was formerly known as the Learning at Cisco uh, data center in RTP to some extent. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, integrating this with NetBox and some Ansible to, to test some automation workflows. That's the end result of all this. Uh, it's been going a little bit slow. But you can see this is the new all-in-one interface where you no longer have a VM Maestro. This is all in my, my Firefox here, and you have the ability to, actually I'll start at the beginning. This is what you see when you log in. You see the kind of overall um, server usage, and I, I think it's fairly intuitive what they've done. You can add what they call a lab, which is like its apology and uh, uh, given name. Enter it, and you have the the node list on the side. The um, uh, the node list is actually kind of they've, they've added some, some uh, nice improvements here. Obviously, you can see they've got this uh, um, uh, traffic generator in T Rex. They've also got this WAN emulator. Uh, this is kind of uh, Ralph worked on this. Um, I can spin it up and show you. It's got an in curses interface when you spin it up, but essentially it lets you set these curves. So you, the, the in-curses interface uh, allows you to choose between things like a satellite link or a broadband link and that type of thing. You can inject these things, and this becomes like a bump on a wire, a connection between two endpoints. And what it's doing is affecting that uh, what's on the wire with these parameters. So you can, you can because everything in viral or CML is Ethernet, this kind of gets you closer to, uh, to a LAN 
uh, type interface where you, you everything's not hunky dory and peachy keen all the time. The other thing that's nice, and let me see if I can get the right uh, interface here, is this. Um, they've got these uh, Linux VMs. So I, on my my lab, I'm using this Ubuntu as more of a server. But you might notice this tab here, VNC. So they now have the ability to put in graphical VMs within the viral topology. Formerly, it was just you had console and you had or text and you had console access, uh, console over text, or text over the console. Now you can do VNC uh, graphical desktops. I think this is the one that has. Uh, yep. So you can see the graphical console. I think this is going to. No, one of them does start. Oh, sorry, there's a desktop. I should have just used that one. Um, that you have this uh, ability to have graphical, so much so that if you had the license for it, you could throw in, you could build your own Windows um, node here, and you could actually have Windows running within your, uh, within your viral topology. But you don't really need that because of this thing right here. So in viral 1.x, they had this notion of a flat, network, uh, NAT, SNAT, um, and you didn't really know what you should use. Uh, but here you go, so here's a graphical user interface. Uh, Cisco, Cisco. Okay. And so you have a full graphical user interface uh, using VNC right, right inside here. And you can also do this with the um, uh, with a true uh, text console as well. So you, you, you're not just limited to one or the other, you have both. Um, there's also a, uh, an SSH interface, so you can SSH to a universal comm server that runs across all your labs, um, and you can access uh, the, the text consoles through that. And they have this utility, this breakout utility, which helps you, it's an external thing you download, which also then helps you connect to your devices, uh, designed to be run for more of an automation type uh, uh, user experience or interface to be able to access the different uh, network devices. And you can see they do a good job trying to determine with the icons whether or not your uh, node is spun up. So it's green solid indicating that it should be responsive. Then they've got uh, uh, kind of a, a spinning, not spinning, but the circular green outline indicating it's coming up. So they've done what I think are some nice usability things to, to help people to make it easier to understand what's going on. And I mentioned that it was, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, the, the from a user interface point of view, obviously you've got the, the HTML5 interface here, very like DNA Center, right? And the and the, 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 the topology views in DNA Center and, and that sort of thing. And I'm guessing that's all part of the, part of the deal, right? Yep, and funny enough, you mentioned that the DNA Center team worked with the viral team, CML team, to uh, do some of this. So I mentioned I, a connectivity is kind of nice. So let's say, for example, I wanted to connect the uh, desktop here to an external connector. Connector. I mouse over the node. You can see this, this halo pops up. This halo has various things. You can access the console, this linkable thing, and then you can start stop the node. So if I click and hold on the link icon, I can drag the link to where I want. And then it tells me I can either explicitly choose what links I want, or I can just say use next available, and it'll create this this link and it kind of adapts to me, just like you said, the DNA, this is called DNA center topology, because it's using the same underlying toolkit. The um, external connectivity these days could not be easier. By default, it's NAT, so it's still a Linux operating system under the covers. Um, that does some local network address translation um, for external connectivity if it's a 192.168.255 address range. But if you want a true end-to-end -end layer two connectivity between your virtual uh, CML node and some external network, you can choose bridge and it will bridge the uh, single interface that, that CML has now, which is nice. In the past, you had like a, a five interface option or a two interface option and users weren't really clear on what they should do or how they should treat those interfaces. This has one virtual interface to like the ESXi or the VMware Fusion workstation, and you can choose to bridge this to that. 
That means if you have an external DHCP server, or if you wanted to connect a virtual router to a real router and have it do uh, routing protocol negotiation, like an OSPF negotiation, you can do that. Obviously, BGP would, would need that too, but you have that, that capability of doing it, and so much so that um, in this actual topology I'm doing, this OOB network is a layer two connectivity. Um, I've got a, a switch here, a, a VLAN configured, all of these management ports. So we click on a link here, you can see, if you click on it, uh, you can see that the management connection, if I click on a link that are between two devices that has multiple links, you can see this is how they're depicting multiple links between the same device and you can drill in. So I have all of these devices essentially homed on this network, which is the network in which the, the viral or CML VM is on. So this gives me a way of treating these devices as kind of an extension of my physical network. Uh, not that the, the horsepower here is designed to, to make these devices really compete with those, but it gives me a lot of flexibility in how I can test things like network management. Uh, in my case, I'm going to be testing some automation. So there's a lot of flexibility in being able to have these external connectivities. So Joe, is, is sure. the concept of multiple users, like with, you know, with VAR, where you had to like, if you wanted to share stimulators with, they'd have their own user and then you could, you had to share the simulator, the simulation with another user within VM Retro or? So you do have, so, so I'm logged in right now as admin. Um, I don't know if they kept it in here. Let's see. Um, systems administration. Yes. So they did. So I can add, um, uh, well, maybe I can, maybe that's something. No, here it is, add user. So I can add a user um, that, uh, for example, if I add a, a user journal, I don't want to grant admin privileges, but I'll just add that user Joe, come up to here and log out. So you remember I had two topologies up previously. When I log in now, I don't see them. So those topologies belong to admin. They're still running, um, right. but Joe can't see those topologies. So the, the topologies are the labs that were spun up by admin, can't be seen by Joe. And, and um, this way you could create multiple users, uh, we get a, a John, a Derek, whatever, and they could have their own topologies um, that run concurrently with the um, uh, with others that, that may not may or may not be logged in. The, the trick is though the PE license, the, uh, oh, I'm not admin anymore, I'm an administrator, let's go back. So oh, phew, my topologies are still there, didn't lose them. And if I go to licensing, you can see a photo, which, ah, here it is, 20 node capacity. So just like- um, same, as, uh, same as viral PE, right? So I can have 20 users running at the same time simulations with one node each. One <laughs> <I> node. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joe, okay. I don't know if you, you may not be able to, to answer this yet. I mean, is it, I guess we're going to be at roughly the same price point as viral PE? My, un, my understanding is yes, uh, I, you're, you're right. I'm not the authority on that. I'm not product management. So I, I will definitively say yes. But my understanding is this is the, the, the next gen. Um, and. And it, it does use a different licensing scheme, but my understanding is it should be comparable. Yeah. Is this uh, uh, World 2 or CML Personal Edition, is this uh, replacing the current version or will there be a parallel, will both be running in parallel for some time? I think the goal is to replace the current version. I know that, that initially CML Enterprise won't have a comparable, uh, they're working on the PE first. Uh, there are a few features they have to complete that are more enterprise centric before they can replace that. But my understanding is they, they do want to, the 1.x has gotten a little long in the tooth. They, the, the supporting of both will be a challenge. So I think the, the, the overall intention is to quickly bring down the 1.x in favor of just the 2.x. Yeah, yeah, understood. Just a general question about Will. What do you, uh, your customers, the people who, who buy Will, what, what are they using it for? Do you have an idea? 
Yeah, um, so there are a number of use cases that people talk about. Um, what we're typically using it for, one of our bigger users are is, is DevNet, actually. Uh, even before uh, the viral CML team came over under Susie's organization, um, Susie Lee's organization, that DevNet and, and Viral had a, had a close friendship, and they were using it for uh, network automation testing and, and testing of topologies. So the, we have a, a team, the Pi ATS team in Cisco, that they built a framework around network testing, and they were automating the creation of topologies in Viral to be able to test various things, make sure that the configurations work, and so on and so forth. So there is a huge usage around that if not externally, though there are, we do know there are customers using it for that within Cisco and, and using it to support things like the viral, or sorry, the, the DevNet sandboxes. Uh, the learning at Cisco team uses it as well. So some of the training we have in support of like uh, CCMP uh, courses for at least enterprise uh, can use and do use um, viral right now in order to create those uh, topologies, those labs that the students will do without needing real hardware. Unfortunately, and, and uh, I, I think it was uh, the, the, the idea of, of not everything can be virtualized. So our data center labs are still very much hardware, um, hardware centric, but where we can use something like viral, we do. Now what our customers tend to use it for uh, is the learning. We get a lot of people who are like, I need to study for my CCNA or CCIE, CCMP, whatever. They want that uh, virtual environment that they can, uh, without having to buy a lot of real hardware, though, still they might have to buy some, they rent a rack or uh, buying a small rack at home. That They get viral and they can connect their rack to viral and, and test there. And then we have um, larger customers who have used non-viral with CML to do network validation and simulation of their network. So they, they, they simulate or, or build as much of their real network as they can within CML um, and then they test various changes to it to make sure that configuration isn't going to break something as much as they can without the real hardware uh, and make sure that it is achieving to some degree the results they want. That's like a level of validation before they might go that into more of a hardware Cool. So one question I have to ask, and uh, the other guys warned me, but I nevertheless <laughs> I will do so. Um, there is this uh, other network simulation tool around uh, GNS3. So, so what are your feelings about it? <laughs> well, Joe, uh, I'm sorry. I can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we, there, there, it's not, there's not just GNS3, there are others. Um, and we yeah, are, an example, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are, the, the team is aware, the team um, is, is trying to find areas of differentiation. Obviously, the biggest thing that, that we, that, or the first thing at least that's probably said is the only way you're entitled legally to get these images, to get the, um, various Cisco reference platforms, so everything from like this row and down, is through viral or CML. So using these with GNS3, you're technically not allowed to do it. So that's that, that's the, the first answer we usually get. And what we're, what we're now... Viral license as well, right? So, well, even then, you're not supposed to do it. But what we do see are people uh, that say, well, I bought the viral license, so I'm going to use it over here. Uh, we're obligated to say that we authorize it for use in this environment. Uh, what we want to, what we're trying to do, and what we've accomplished a, a great deal of with 2.0 or the 2.x train is really being remaining competitive, at creating a platform that we can do new and new stuff on top of. Um, it was a little bit uh, tricky and, and, and hard to maintain. There wasn't a desire really to keep the, uh, the previous platform around. So what we were seeing, and, and we saw this, we heard this from our community, was people were saying, is, is viral still around? I guess still is dead, I'm still working on it. And in fact, all that time, the team was really trying to say, how do we, how do we get back, how do we reinvent this with this type of, of 
of interface and platform. Um, but at the same time, having to keep those, try to keep those regular releases, try to fix bugs, uh, and, and do it with the viral team is fairly small, uh, do it with the resources they had. So I, I, I think I've only really ever, I've seen people use GNS3. Uh, I myself have only um, really used either uh, viral or, or this thing that we have internally that's people have heard of the iOS on Linux. Um, yep. So that's really the only simulation type I've used. Um, but I hear that people like the fact that um, GNS3 can do, you can find some of those older um, uh, risk-based images like the 3600 series router and, and run stuff like that in there. Um, what we're trying to do here is create a platform on which we can do stuff that people will be excited about that will set us apart people say yeah i want that because they're doing some cool things maybe with, with packet capture or, or different image types or i don't know what else they've got uh, what uh, the team is working on um, for the future releases but the other thing they want to get yeah sorry what, go, for it, go for it no i was just going to say my, my my other question i suppose was then what doesn't it do that, that is probably on the list of, of, of would like to happen. So things like, would you ever consider, or would, would Cisco ever consider having um, images from other, um, other vendors, you know, able to be integrated, that sort of thing? Well, we, we do now and we can. So absolutely, yes. So the, uh, these nodes here are technically not Cisco and they don't count towards the, the node license. So okay. you have, no, not that, but these, and uh, while we don't necessarily test with it, uh, you could add other virtual um, uh, nodes, maybe from uh, Juniper or Arista, whatever they've got that's virtual. If you could figure out like how it works with like libvirt and KVM, um, you, you could get it put in here. Would we do that officially, probably not, but I will say there are things not shown here just because we couldn't get cleared in time. We've gotten things like the Catalyst 9800 to run in here. Uh, we okay. have some of the Victella um, uh, SD-WAN uh, images to run in here. So this is a very uh, open framework in terms of it's using standard stuff or at least common stuff like Libvirt and KVM. So you can get more images in here. So uh, let me ask appliances like that, like like ACI, APIC, our DNA center is you know, kind of like minimum because I mean that's what people are going to use to build up, right? Yes, um, the issues with with ACI, APIC, um, I don't know that you'd ever get that in here. Just they, they have a. My understanding is there's an ACI simulator kind of appliance that already exists with DNA center. It's, it's conceivable that we could see that in, in the future here because it's something that potentially could be virtualized. The key is going to be the devices. So for like an SDA fabric, I need some Catalyst 98, I'm sorry, Catalyst 9Ks. We put the 9800 in here, we put the virtual WLC in here uh, in, in some internal images, they, they do work. The issue is if you trying to virtualize some of the, the key bits of hardware that you need from the Cat 9K to really enable an SDA fabric um, could be challenging. That said, if that said, if you had a big enough server uh, and we could virtualize, uh, get a virtual uh, uh, Cisco DNA center image in here, and you had real 9Ks, you could connect through the, the um, external connectivity. I just don't know. It's something obviously we that's been in discussion. Like, how can we get more modern? Um, uh, what, what we're pushing from like the intent-based networking standpoint into here, um, it, we're going to keep having those conversations uh, because we realize that the people. Do that, but it might be something where the there's some sort of hybrid that we might start offering as a service where you can get access to an honest uh, to goodness. Cat 9K test bed with DNA center with some viral interconnectivity as a service. There, there's all sorts of things we might be able to do um, if we wanted to. It's just a, a, a question of. Be awesome, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So are there uh, plans, and uh, this goes already in this direction, are there plans to incorporate more or other device types or images? Always could be. Uh, there, there's nothing hard and fast that I've heard in, in the short term. Uh, this is likely what you're going to get um, on the first ship of 2.0, what you see here in terms of the reference platforms. Uh, but we're always looking to be so more are valuable. There, and, are there plans to tie it into some of the, you know, the DevNet curriculum and stuff, some of the, you know, the kind of the always on sandboxes or or that where you can download a you know an image file right and deploy an architecture rather than connecting to DevNet or something like that. There, this already is powering the all of some of the sandboxes, and yes, I, I won't rule anything out at this point. We've we've got this new uh, the co the coming together finally of of DevNet with the CML team. I think we're going to be able to start having some really cool conversations about what could come next. Um, so I wouldn't take anything off the table and nothing firm that we can just say, yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, the only thing firm I could say is going to happen is we're going to see 2.0 in, in the very near future. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just just the, the look and feel clearly is is such a big step, um, big step up. So much better than Maestro. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've been grappling with that one on the um, the multi IR sandbox in the the DevNet um, environment for on and off for the last couple of weeks, and uh, yeah, it has its challenges for sure. But um, but this this is uh, yeah a, a, a world away from that, isn't it? So they're yep. they're very Definitely. proud of it, and I. I, I think they've done a great job. Um, yeah, I, I used a few versions of this before RC3 here. Uh, they've come even light years from, from that uh, I, to, to the point where I'm really, I, I'm, I'm spending more time doing the actual work than fighting the features or the, the bugs in, in the product. So I, I really feel like it's, it's truly a tool that's helping me do something that I think is going to be really important and cool when it's all done with this automation. Um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, looks, looks, looks really cool. Much better than the old Eclipse, Eclipse uh, interface. With the simulation part, can you like replay PCAPs and stuff like that? The... Well, the, so with the T-Rex, you can, you, with the traffic generator, you yeah, can uh, like internally on the links, right? But what I'm talking about is you know, replaying incidents that we may have captured. Like, I mean, and where I'm going with this is, I know a lot of times, you know, you're trying to troubleshoot something in the field, right? And you have a PCAP, you would like to have a like a lab environment or something where you can take that. And because this is built to model production, right? Then maybe you replay that PCAP file within the simulation. You. You could do that with some of the with some of the traffic generation, but this so what you're seeing here simulate is so everything has got this is the properties for a link. Everything has got um, the, the notion of simulate is, is for that object. Does it run? Is it part of a simulation? And yes, I can do a packet capture on that particular interface. But this in and of itself isn't going to allow me to start drag and drop a, a sniffer file to a link and, and have it replay, for example. Well, I guess you could always, I mean, how I've done it in the past is you have an external connection and then you use that as your traffic operator that then gets pumped in. You could do that. That should work out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this is prime for a few guys after we get licensing, right? I would love to test Ansible, do our, our, our webinar demonstration using Ansible in this thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I that's, that's, that's what I've, <clears throat> what I hope to be uh, doing here on this auto. So I'm going to put Docker on this. Uh, I've just put in some of my Ansible uh, stuff for the automation. I'm going to create a netbox. External netbox is hanging out here on this network. It's going to send a webhook to a uh, web service here that's going to generate some inventory capability. Uh, and the idea is I want to create a pipeline that automatically provisions this, uh, consider these like an end of row or end of zone set of, of aggregate switches off of the core. That's that's the intent. 
um, just to prove that, that we can automate all of that. And it's a, a nice test bed to be able to do it in. So it's once you do it here, then you've got a notion that eh, nothing's going to catch on fire, probably. And then I can move it to a, a physical N9K test bed and validate I mean, it there. So, yeah. Perfect for testing those automation use cases, isn't it? Because that's one of the steps that's yeah. always one of, one of those things that you think, well, actually, I'm going to automate all this stuff. But I'm, are they going to let me loose on the live network with, with that automation? Because you make the mistake once, you make it make the mistake a thousand times. Whereas, I suppose if you can run it against a, a, a viral simulation, then I'm a little excited right now. Are you saying that, that, that you're including playbooks in this thing? Oh no, this is this 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 I put a little bit of work into. Yeah. Playbook. This is this is my. Uh, I've already written all of this. Okay. Uh, that, that said, it, it wouldn't. It isn't far off that. So we have as part of DevNet this automation exchange now, developer.cisco.com, where there are people now contributing code. There could be playbooks put in here with. So the the new topology format, by the way, is. Um, can I export this lab? Uh, or uh, it's all JSON based now. So previously it was XML. Um, Any chance to get in my collection of old labs? Yes. So you can import the uh, previous format. So it will support. Oh, sorry. They made it YAML. It used to be JSON. Forgive me. It used to be JSON early in the development. It's now it's now a YAML file. Um, I myself am not the biggest YAML fan, but. Uh, Whatever, I don't get, go into religious debates, but you can also import uh, 1.x, the XML viral files. So if you have uh, some of those, you can do it. Okay. That, that, that's good news, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. Any more, this, this any more questions, guys? This, is, this, is, this has been an absolute revelation to me because uh, my limited exposure to viral one, this just looks awesome. I actually have one more question. Sure. Joe. How can we get, can we borrow you again? Because I, I definitely, as soon as we break open this viral, I definitely want to, you know, pick your brain a little bit more and get a couple of live demos going. Sure, sure. I'm, uh, I'm happy to do so. When we, I think there'll be much celebration from the team when they, when they finally launch. So me, or maybe we get some of the team in here and we, we, we just really get the word out that, hey, it's available, go have fun, um, give us feedback. You know, since it's smart license, I guess, is there going to be like a down, like an evaluation period for people that don't, you know, like for a 30 day or 60, like, like with some of the other? So I, I, I don't know. That is a good question because what you're not seeing here is when you first install it, it tells you you're in an, an eval period, but you can create topologies. You just can't spin them up. So I don't know uh, that that's something I'd have to check with product management. I don't know if their plan is to allow for a, a brief like 30 day eval or if they're really going to require uh for the personal edition that you've got that you go out and buy the or generate the smart license i'm not quite sure on that it seems like with all the smart stuff that it kind of automatically drops into that time the eval period right um like like a lot of other software solutions right yeah it, it, it would make sense, uh, but it, uh, I know that right now the 30, the, the eval period, I think it's a 90 day, it says that eval period just lets you log in, uh, drag and drop nodes, connect them, but the minute you try to spin anything up, eh, you, have to, you have to actually have a license on there. So you mentioned earlier about the resources, right, and, and be, making better use of that. Maybe you know, on the player side, I mean, is it more, it's more geared towards the, like, you know, I guess it can run on a laptop better now in player. But, you know, do you have an idea? I mean, it was, I think the previous, what was what, 64 gigs or something like that? Or 32 gigs of RAM? They were rec was it recommended for a workstation? No, um, so let me, sh I show you something. Um, each node has, just like in Viral 1, so this is an iOS VL2 node. Go to simulate here, you can see that this thing takes um, pretty much one CPU or a shared CPU and 768 meg of RAM. Whereas an N9K virtual takes six gig of RAM and two CPUs of its own. So it will depend on what you want to spin up. And unfortunately, I've got uh, quite a few nodes already running. So when we look at the overall memory taken, um, I've used 28 gig, 
but I've got one, two, so six, 12, uh, 18, 24. Uh, then this is what I said, like let's say one here between these two. So that right there is 25. So the, 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 the Linux operating uh, operating system itself is fairly lightweight. It's a CentOS image, uh, fairly stripped down with just the supporting bits needed for the, the network, the, the, the interconnection of the, of the nodes, the networking framework, and the, the KVM support, the actual viral uh, virtualization support. So it's, they've done a really good job at taking out um, as much of the, uh, the the overhead as possible. So you wouldn't need that much to get a, a topology running on your laptop. So my Mac that, that is in front of me here has 16 gig of RAM. If I wanted to, I could give eight gig over to um, viral. Uh, I think it's got my, I've got four cores. I have to look how many cores I've got on here. Let's say I gave it uh, two CPUs and eight gig of RAM. I could get a, a, a couple of um, a CSR 1000 Vs on there, plus a few iOS Vs, uh, and have some decent routing testing going on right on my laptop without crippling the rest of the laptop. You can get a uh, so the message is, sorry, the, me the message is if I go from world one to two, I don't have to buy a new computer. I can use the old one and probably even better than the, than before, right? That's the goal. That is the goal. <laughs> <laughs> I use the um, you know the, the player edition for all of a, of about you know one day before I switched to ESX because it was it was just it was it was impossible to run on my workstation at least my laptop. So so Joe, I, I see you run. Uh, you said a Mac, right? Yep. Is that what you prefer, performance wise? I prefer that's what I prefer from just the user. I'm I'm a yeah, free BSD guy. So I, I need my Unix shells and I need my virtual desktop. So I prefer that. Now at home, this, this is a server running in our lab. This is a UCS uh, VM and an OVA running on a UCS server. At home, I've got ESI running on a Mac Pro behind me over there uh, with, with this on it. I think I've allocated six CPUs to it. And uh, I want to say like 64 gig of, no, no, that's how much is total on there. I think I've given it 16 gig of RAM. Uh, and I do some small topologies just to do some like EDM testing or basic automation for, for home. And it works just fine. Because I had the ACI simulator on mine. And, and obviously, uh, I don't know if you ran the ACI simulator. That much consumes your whole laptop, right? So that's, that's okay. <laughs> no. I've got a NetApp uh, a virtual on tap on my laptop. It's about the most appliance based VMs I've been brave enough to run in Fusion on my laptop. <laughs> okay. Well, well, listen, I think we've run out of questions, Joe. <laughs> Thank, thanks for your time and for brilliant to see to see Viral Two coming and, and on its way. As Derek says, we are definitely going to get you back because um, I can see this being incredibly useful in some of the automation learning and everything that, that the guys are going to be doing over over the you know, following months. So uh, I think all that's left to say is thanks very much and um, sure. see you again soon, guys. Thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, it was awesome. Cool. My pleasure.